Michigan's primary is still nearly two months away, but this year's gubernatorial race is already a roller coaster ride for the record books. The Republican side started with 10 candidates until five were disqualified from the ballot for fraudulent signatures. And one of them is Perry Johnson, who is our first guest this morning. Thank you so much for joining me. Well, thank you so much for having me. You have certainly been on a bit of a roller coaster ride. I can only imagine the blow that this took on your campaign, your team, everybody that's worked so hard to get you this far. In fact, I would have to say that Monday was probably one of the worst days of my life. Mm. But more importantly, you have to factor in that the voters are disenfranchised. And that's a key element. You have people that sign the petitions. And the main reason for the petitions to begin with is that you have to make sure you have reasonable support. Right. But it's no secret I was number two in the polls and I'd only been running for three months. So I obviously had reasonable support, and it's no secret that I turned in 23,176 petitions or thereabouts. So let's talk about these signatures yes. and the importance that they are accurate and they are validated. Did you have a team of people that scrutinize each and every one, making sure they're voters, making uh, sure they live uh, in Michigan? Wait a second. First of all, as a practical matter, I want you to realize that uh, the team that they had over there in the Democratic Party, Secretary of State, claimed that it was impossible for them to check all the names, and they have the voter file. They can actually check the signatures. We can't. Now, I'll give you an example. So no. there's no process in place for your campaign team that verified these signatures. You that can't these verify. Are actual people that oh. live in these locations that are voters. Well, well think about there's it. There's no way to verify them with your team. I want you to th think about what happens. You hire petitioners, and you hire a consultant, and they hire the petitioners, and then they gather the signatures. Now, if I, I had a telemarketing operation, for example. Okay. Uh, I had that for approximately 10 years. And if you have a spectacular telemarketer, they make 150 dials a day, they get a hold of 30 people. That's how many they'll get a hold of per day. So let's say that we have 23,000. For each 100, you're going to need three and a third days to get a hold of 100 people. You would need a total of 33 days to get a hold of 1,000 people. What does this have to do with just the validity? How, how do you verify a signature if you can't see it? Think about it. How, look at these. But you saw all of them. You, your team collected them. Do you feel like this firm failed you in any way? You hired some people, paid money for people to go out we and hired five signatures. Firms. And many of those signatures, enough to get you booted off the ballot, weren't valid. According to the Democrats, <laughs> we never had a right to this, challenge them, ever. I understand this is a system that everybody has to follow, not just for oh, wait. Governor, but That's Congress. not true. This is this is Okay, I'll give process. you this system. I'm gonna give you this system. We're gonna have the Republicans check all of Biden's votes. Now, they're gonna check them. The Democrats never We're not get a chance about to look. Votes. We're just talking about you. Well, being let's take petitions. To get on the ballot. Let's, are, let's, let's, are these any good? Let's jump over to are they any good? lawsuit. So you're off the ballot right now. Ballots are already yes. have begun being printed. So what is your process? Because you're not giving up this fight. We saw James Craig. He wants to go right in. What are well, you doing? I'm going to fight. Right in is almost impossible. Instead of 2% 2 Tudor, you're going to have 2% Craig. The reality of the matter is you have to get on the ballot. And uh, the judge, I believe, feels that our constitutional rights were violated because we didn't have a chance to even argue our case. Is that what the judge told you? I believe that's what the judge is going to rule. We have a very fair judge. So as of this taping right now, there's no decision. So uh, what you know, happens if the decision is you will not be on the ballot? What's your next step? If the judge decides we're not on the ballot because of the fact that they cannot have enough paper, but I should be on the ballot, but if the decision is your name will not be on the ballot. We'll probably appeal it. Mm -hmm. The reality of the matter is they admitted that I had 2,400 valid signatures. They admitted it, that they excluded. And they said they decided to exclude, ex exclude them for a variety of reasons. We then said, okay, we challenge that. We want to look at them. What was their answer? We don't have them. So let's say you do challenge it and you find out and you see, okay, these are not valid signatures. You're, you're 
excluding the fact that that could actually be the No, reality. no, they said they were valid. They admitted they were valid. But you had enough that were invalid. No, no, I was only off 1,200. They had 2,400 that they said were valid signatures. So what are you They telling, admitted they were valid. What are you telling your supporters? A lot of people contributed to your campaign. Not many. If you're not... I, I'm fully self-funded. In fact, uh, the reality of the matter is the people at the end that contributed to the one finance, one fundraiser that I had in my life, I've saved the checks and I'll return it to them if I'm not on the ballot. Okay. The reality is I'm more concerned about the voters who want to be able to elect the candidates that should be on the Republican ticket instead of having the Democrats decide who should be on the ticket. This is certainly uh, uncharted waters here to see <laughs> this number of people off of the ballot. Um, and I think, That's never happened. I think um, what you said in the beginning, because you, you put obviously a lot of work and a lot of money into this campaign, and for, for this blow to happen oh, is... Put over seven seven and a half million dollars in the campaign. And I believe I'm in the right. And not only that, I believe that they're dead wrong in the number of number of signatures that they invalidated the reality is we checked them you can look at these these are ones we did not turn in so we not, didn't turn them so in. if you don't get on the ballot will you try to run again if I don't get on the ballot I will and probably you're not appeal gonna do right in you'll appeal if none of that works is there an opportunity that you think in your future where you would consider going through this process. Well, I guess we have again. to wait for three years again. <laughs> but you know what I would do? Uh, I would have 30,000. In fact, we would have had 30,000 if the sec if they had told us what they knew in March, that they had this guy out there that they said was doing fraudulent work. Had they communicated that to all the people and they knew it, but, but I would have had 30,000. You're guy. You should have made sure that no, you had No, how do you know? How do you know? Okay. One of these signatures is invalid. Tell me which one it is. All right. Well, guess what? We are out of time, but I will And the reality is you couldn't you. tell. <laughs> no. You know, you and I know That's you couldn't tell. That's not my job. Perry, thank you so much for joining us. I no appreciate it. No one could. It.